every time a human being dies, a library burns. It's a horrible tragedy that all our life experiences get lost, both good and bad. I think it's a psychological crutch that we need to pretend that aging is both inevitable and in some sense desirable. That the mutual reinforcement of thinking of both of those things help us, helps us not to think about either of them, if you like. Transhumanism is the idea that we can use technologies not just to change the world around us, but also to enhance our own biological organism. For example, by extending the healthy human lifespan, by improving memory and cognition and concentration, or our emotional well-being. My personal view is that we are the information, the processing going on in our minds, which means that an uploaded mind would actually be the same person. A computer copy of me would be me. In the same way that we have 100-year-old cars now that are working just as well as they did when they rolled off the production line, insofar as there were production lines back then. Um, similarly, we will once we become able to implement sufficiently comprehensive repair and maintenance technologies, we'll be able to do the same to the human body. About two-thirds of all people who die, die of age-related illnesses. And that amounts to about 100,000 people every day that die. And if you begin to think about just the numbers, um, it becomes clear that if you really want to save human lives, it would be ridiculous to ignore what is by far the biggest cause of death, which is aging. At present it's of course very speculative how to uh, transfer the contents of a brain onto a computer. Uh, but a rough sketch would be something like this. Uh, you freeze the brain, uh, you slice it very thinly. Uh, this very thin slice that you scan using an electron microscope or an, an, uh, some other form of microscope and at a nanometer precision. Uh, you get these images, you process them in a computer to create a three-dimensional model of where are the different synapses and neurons, what are the strengths, what are the connections. You use that to create a, a computer simulation of uh, the brain and then you start the simulation. The repair and maintenance of a machine entails the reversal and repair of damage that accumulates as a side effect of the normal functioning of the machine. So in the case of the human body, that can be defined at a cellular level and a molecular level. For example, in some tissues, our cells die and are not naturally replaced by the division of other cells. And a repair, and a repair of that problem would be simply to use stem cell therapy to affect the technological replacement of those cells. I think uploading at first is just going to be a purely scientific endeavor. But as the technology develops, it's going to become cheaper and people are going to start thinking about it as a way of storing memories and perhaps preserving identities. And of course, if this is a way of creating artificial intelligences uh, that can think or even uh, copies of human beings, the economic impact is going to be quite tremendous. The thing about repair and maintenance is that the sky's the limit. If we again go back to vintage cars, the people who are keeping these vintage cars on the road these days are not actually doing any more sophisticated work on them now than they were, let's say, 30 years ago or 50 years ago when they were only three or four times as old as they were designed to be. Once you understand how to do sufficiently comprehensive maintenance, that's it. You can just keep the machine at a manageable level of damage, so to speak, a level that is not prejudicial to the functioning of the machine. eventually overpopulation will be a problem that has to be solved and there are different ways in which you can do that um, you can either force people off basically killing people or withholding life-saving treatments and that would be horrible or you can uh, limit the rate at which new people are brought into existence, which is clearly the ethically preferable option. Certainly some people may feel that it's sufficiently important to have a lot of children around that it's better to carry on not using these therapies, not keeping people youthful, and therefore keeping the death rate high, or perhaps keeping the death rate high in some other way, in order to be able to carry on having a lot of children. And some other sectors of society may feel the opposite. They may feel that actually it's okay not to have so many children in order to be able to keep indefinitely youthful. And I think that would be fine, just in the same way that, for example, the Amish and the rest of society have different views on the use of many aspects of modern technology today. We live in harmony with them in the same world, and that may be how it will be in the future. 
I think some people living today uh, might uh, be able to upload themselves. I, I would expect uh, that the uploading would become possible, at least in some form, uh, late mid-century. Uh, which means that uh, a lot of people, uh, younger people actually, might have a shot at it. It's very difficult to forecast the time frame for future technological developments, such as advances in anti-aging. Um, and that means that it could take much longer than we think, or uh, take much less time than we think. Um, and people, some people might make very confident predictions about exactly how long it's going to take. I think that the truth of the matter is we just don't know.